be young minor or girl living with my tribe on our island. Papa is the tribe chief, which means he is the biggest and toughest minotaur ever. I tell Papa that one day I'll be even stronger than him but he just laughs. It is good you wish to be strong, little one, but if so, it is better to have a strong heart than a strong arm. That is wisdom your mama shared with me, and she would tell you the same if she were here. Then Papa gets all quiet like he usually does when he remembers mama. I ask him if I have grown enough to go on the fishing boats with him and he snaps out of it. He promises that before the summer ends I will sail a great sea with him. A week later strange boats land on our shores. Papa gets that far away look in his eye again. The humans have found us. The tribe is asking Papa if they should fight but he tells them no. Hundreds of humans covered in metal march into our village. The shiniest human goes up to Papa and demands him to kneel. One of the tribe's women takes me aside to try and keep me from seeing whatever is happening. After a while some humans come over and drag me away from the others. The shiny human holds me by the arm so tightly it hurts. If all is settled, we will be taking your daughter to the capital to assure your good behavior. So long as you and your bestial ilk serve the legion well, you shall earn the emperor's mercy. They, they are going to take me away I can see tears in my papa's eyes as he looks down at me. I am sorry little one, you'll have your chance to sail on a ship, but papa will not be able to go with you this time. He blinks away his tears, stands up to his full height, and places a hand on his breast he doesn't speak a word but I know what he wants to tell me. I must keep a strong heart. The humans take me away to the boats and lock me into a tiny room for the trip. There is no window, so during my first week of sailing I never get to see the ocean. Weeks later I arrive in the capital, where there are more people and buildings than I ever imagined the world could hold. The whole of our island could fit in this one city, and I start to realize why Papa didn't want to fight. I'm brought before two humans in robes, who start talking about what to do with me. I say we set her to work at one of the temples. She's perhaps young enough to pick up a little civilization. Oh here we go again with your rehabilitation nonsense you can't just put a monster in a toga and pretend it will suddenly become sapient. Nothing like that. I just think that when she returns to her tribe that after living in civilization she might better convince them to give up their barbarism. Ha if she returns. We'll send her to the temple. But only because seeing these fiends born subjugated and labouring in the presence of the gods makes quite a compelling sight for the masses. In that case we should give her a proper name. Can't have mongrel speech in the holy sites. How does Nicolita sound a bit ironic to name a hostage victory don't you think I like to think it serves as a reminder of what her father must give us to see her safe? Maybe you're not such a bleeding heart after all. Years later I am cleaning the altar within the temple of Apollo as I have to do after every sacrifice. It's a festival, so today I have the pleasure of cleaning up the disemboweled corpse of a white calf. The priests have a whole sermon on why it's proper to make a minor to perform this duty, but I'm sure they just find it funny. Apollo may be the god of music and light, but Sunny is the last word I would use to describe their demeanor. The worst part are the initiates, who never miss an opportunity to heckle me as I pass. Oh, what tragedy it's always a shame to see a maiden bury her lover, and when the marriage was so close at hand to come brothers, let us pray for our beloved cow in this trying time, fuckers, I don't have the spare breath to curse them with lugging 200 pounds of meat to the pyre, I'm always the one selected for the heavy labors, even though I'm barely any taller or stronger than a human, when I first was brought to the temple, my meals weren't much more than a bowl of grass straight from the field. I tried to tell the priests about the fishing boats on my island but they had called me a liar. I can believe your people ate meat, but who ever heard of a cow eating fish of all things? Cattle grow just fine on a diet of grass and you'll do the same. You are here to be tamed after all. Apparently the priests thought that feeding me meat might reawaken my hunger for human flesh thankfully the slaves were willing to slip me some of their bread and porridge so I didn't starve. I might be a hostage but I may as well be a slave as well as far as it matters. Goblins, orcs, dwarfs, and even an elf all labor to keep the temple of Apollo in splendid shape for the humans. Once a season a priest takes me aside to send a letter to Papa. The only reason I know he's still alive is he fights for the empire somewhere out there. I'm only there to add a few names or minor words to make the letter sound at least a tiny bit authentic. 
I'm sure there's nothing but lies on those scrolls, but I've never asked to see them. Doing so my tip the priests off that I've learned how to read. Every day before dawn I wash the 50 foot statue of Apollo and see the inscription at its base. You, who sing to Apollo with all your heart, he will honor. As the sun rises I am sent away as the priests begin their rituals, so that my presence will not displease Apollo. After all, only humans are born with souls, crafted by the gods in their own image to be masters of all. I desperately wish I was human. I once tried to saw off my horns, but halfway through the pain was too great and I started crying. The priests heard the noise and when they discovered what I was doing they had me beaten as punishment. They used their holy magic to repair my horn, but let me keep the bruises. But there are other ways to rebel. Underneath the temple, I sit in the darkness of the slave quarters straining to hear the music above. Whenever I catch a scrap of a melody, I hum it to myself and try to find the notes on a beat up lyre. I had found it thrown out in the trash, probably by one of the initiates after the strings broke and he was too lazy to repair it. It can barely play a few notes and my large fingers don't help, but it's my one treasure. The slaves humor me, and sit around telling stories of their own lost homes as I play for them. We sing together in the dark, mourning lost family and stolen lands. Above, the humans praise the gods for protecting them from the evils of the world. One morning, I rise for my duties early so my chores may be done well before sunrise I have prayed to Apollo before, though I don't know any of the songs or words that he favors, but always it was done in secret, in the shadows. Just once I want to beseech him in the light, with his sight upon me. I read the inscription one last time and hope I have the strength of heart my papa wished of me. I bring out my lyre and whisper my own hymns to a god I fear hates me. I pray that the fur will fall from my body and my hooves will soften. I pray that my horns will be shed and my tail disappear. I pray that I will be made human, and in gratitude I will spend every day and night singing for Apollo until my heart bursts. I pray that Papa will be kept safe as he risks his life in battle for a people that hate him. I pray the Mama still watches over, and is not ashamed of what's become of us. I pray that if the gods have no love for a monster, that they might at least have pity. When I'm finished, the first rays of sunlight are peeking over the horizon. In my hands I see the lyre glow and feel its warmth as if a tiny flame has been placed in my hands. The glow fades. Then suddenly I find my arm caught in a tight grip from behind. I turn to find myself face to face with the high priest, his eyes wide with shock. He calls for the guards, and before long I am carried away. From my dungeon cell I can hear the priests arguing in the other room. Execution. That's the only course of action. Charge her with heresy or witchcraft do we even need to cite a reason have her put down it's not like she's a citizen. She's a hostage. Right we may need to check with the legion. No need. Her father is just some captain in the monstrous auxiliaries. Nobody worth considering. The important thing is that this must be dealt with swiftly. The waning of our power lately is of grave concern, but we've managed to keep news of it suppressed, right? If the people heard not only that, but also of a monster being granted divine spells, well there would be a lot of questions about where exactly the will of the gods lies, then it is settled. Tomorrow, she shall be slain. Let her be a sacrifice upon Apollo's very altar that she has dared to profane. Perhaps then he will again smile upon his faithful chosen, as they all murmur their agreement. I slowly walk over to the tiny barred window of my cell. They were not gentle in their questioning, and it hurts to move too much. But I just want to watch what will now be my last sunset, and offer one last prayer for Apollo. I tell him that I don't hate him, even as his followers plan my murder. In that brief moment when he let a sliver of his power fall upon me, I felt warmth and love. I felt a lightness in my heart that I'd missed since the day they took me away from Papa. And as the sun dips below the horizon, I swear it seems that it only seems to get brighter. Almost as if the sun itself is coming closer, reaching out to me. When the guards arrive to check my cell the next morning, they find it empty. I sit by a campfire in a snowy forest, strange companions all around me. They say they are a group of veteran adventurers, swords who travel where the greatest treasures can be won or the greatest good can be done. They found me passed out in the middle of the ice and nursed my wounds. All evening I've shared with them my tale, 
and found that I've somehow wound up in the Snowlands beyond the Empire's northern borders. Their leader is a dragonborn named Daisy, a warrior who reminds me of my papa with her great strength but gentle demeanor. She asks me to concentrate and see if I can bring forth the magic Apollo bestowed upon me. My lyre was taken from me by the guards, but somehow was back with me when I arrive here. I hold it in my hands and strum as I sing one of the little hymns I had composed back beneath the temple. Before my eyes the lyre starts to glow with a golden light, and that feeling of warmth comes back into my breast. Daisy smiles at me, more amused than awed by the display. Light. It's a cantrip, the lowest level of magic. Not much of a boon for a god to grant, unfortunately. I shake my head at her, tears streaming in my eyes even as I smile wide with excitement. You're wrong. It's the greatest of miracles. It's a message from the gods themselves. I stand up and shout my words into the night sky, as if the wind could carry them all the way to the empire. I have a soul I'm not a monster Daisy comes forward and embraces pulls me into an embrace. You're right, my fair cow maiden, you're here with us now because your god has a purpose for you. You're not a monster. You're going to be a hero, being a Kalita stronghold, level 1 minor to a cleric of Apollo. So I've recently moved Nick Bairdia merch over to Teesprings and have a few new designs, listings are below the video and in the description.